In last class, I have discussed about the various aspects of design of retaining wall and then different types of retaining wall that is gravity retaining wall, semi gravity retaining wall, then cantilever retaining wall, then uh, counter for retaining wall. Now, in this uh, class, I will basically solve one uh, example on cantilever retaining wall to show that how this the dimension of this uh, retaining wall is decided and what are the factor of safety or the safety that you have to check and uh, during the design of this retaining wall. Now, first uh, if I um, go for the uh, problem, now suppose if we take one retaining structure which is a cantilever retaining wall in this form. Suppose this is the retaining wall and a ground surface is this one. Now, this ground surface or the backfill side which is making an angle I equal to 15 degree with horizontal and this is a backfill side. And this one is the existing ground surface. Now, this <coughs> first for the first trial uh, based on the uh, guidelines that I have given in the last class, I have chosen this dimension of this retaining wall that for the, this top portion I have taken this is 0.3 meter. Then uh, on this height of this retaining wall from this here to here that height is 4.8 meter and this thickness that I have taken thickness of this base slab is 0 0.6 meter, 0 0.6 meter. So, below this ground level the total distance below this ground level is 1 meter basically to the base of the slab. Now, what are the other dimensions that is taken like if we extend this because this triangular portion. So, the dimension of this portion as I mentioned that this distance from here to here is taken as 0 0.6 meter that means, from here to here this is the toe. Then this distance if I extend this triangular part. So, this distance is taken 0 0.2 meter. Now, as usual as I mentioned that top portion is 0 0.3 meter. So, this one is also 0 0.3 meter and this total slab distance or length is taken as 3 meter. So, the total base width of this retaining wall or base distance is 3 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 that is 4.1 meter. So, that is basically point 3 plus 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 which is equal to 4.1 meter. Now, the other uh, distance or this things we can take, we can take the extend these vertical lines which is passing through this edge of this retaining wall. Then we divide this total retaining wall as we are we will solve this problem particular this problem by using this Rankine's theory that we will solve this problem by using Rankine's theory. So, as I have mentioned that uh, we will consider the weight of this soil also. So, first we consider that our 
active earth pressure which will act at an angle of 15 degree with horizontal and the point of application that will act at a distance of this total vertical line to the one third. Now, the distance of this total vertical line before we start we can determine the distance of this portion. So, this portion is this is tan 15 into 3. So, distance from this point to this point is 0 0.8 meter that is will come from tan 15 into 3. So, the total height of this vertical line from say A to B. So, distance A B that will give us the distance or this height is 0 0.8 for this one, then 4.8 for from here to here, then additional 0 0.6 meter the thickness of blade slab. So, total the distance that is uh, height is 6.2 meter. So, the point of application of this lateral earth pressure is 6.2 divided by 3, which is 2.07 meter from the base of the retaining wall. Now, <coughs> as from this design you are neglecting, you will neglect the effect of this passive resistance, but for this, this can also be uh, included in the calculation, but for the first case this problem will be solved by neglecting this passive pressure. So, now if I want to solve this problem by Rankine's theory, so as we have to check whether Rankine's theory can be applicable or not. So, if I determine this angle. So, this angle we can determine the expression is 45 degree plus i by 2 minus phi dash by 2 minus sin inverse sin i divided by sin phi dash. So, now the <coughs> values which is given for this problem that phi dash is 32 degree, delta is 23 degree, delta is the friction angle between the this concrete retaining wall and the soil. And here for the simplicity that it is assumed that this is the foundation soil, this is backfill and this is a foundation soil and assume the properties are same for both the soils, foundation soil and backfill soil, but in some cases the this property may not be same. So, in that case we have to consider different properties for different conditions. So, for the foundation soil calculation we have to then the delta of the base of the retaining wall and the soil that friction angle will be based on the foundation soil properties and this friction angle delta which is with backfill and the retaining wall that will also change and that will depend on the backfill properties, soil properties. So, then in that case the delta of these two may not be same. So, that consideration you have to uh, take in care into our uh, calculation if the soil properties are different for the foundation soil and backfill soil. But for this uh, problem, we consider the both the properties are same for this soil total system. So, now the delta for all the system is 23 degree, the unit weight is 19 kilo Newton per meter cube, I which is, is 15 degree and the allowable bear, bearing pressure. is 400 kilo Newton per meter square. So, now we have to solve this <coughs> another the unit weight of concrete is taken 24 kilo Newton meter cube and unit weight of soil is taken as 19 kilo Newton per meter cube. 
So, first you have to determine this angle, so that we can check whether this value is we, we ranking theory can be applicable or not. So, this angle we can determine by 45 degree plus 15 degree by 2 minus 32 degree by 2 minus sin inverse sin 15 degree divided by sin 32 degree. So, this value is coming out to be 7.26 degree. So, if this uh, value is 7.26 degree, so this line will pass through the back pill soil, it will not pass through the vertical stream of the retaining wall. So, uh, as this angle is very small. So, we can consider that the rankings theory can be applied. So, this is the first check we have done that then we can use the rank kind theory. Now, we will proceed for the other sections. Now, first we will calculate what is the active earth pressure that will act into this soil or into this retaining wall. So, first we will calculate this P A that is equal to half into K A into gamma of soil into A square. So, H we are taking this as I mentioned that H we are now taking the total vertical distance from A to B, the total height we are taking and that A B is 6.2 meter. So, if I take this 6.2 meter, then K A by using Rankine's theory, if we can consider this K A is cos i into cos i minus root over cos i square minus cos phi dash square divided by cos i plus root over cos i square minus cos phi dash square. So, if I put this value, so then this is cos 15 degree into cos 15 degree minus root over cos 15 degree square minus cos 32 degree square divided by cos 15 degree plus root over cos 15 degree square minus cos 32 degree square. So, this k a value if I solve this thing this k is value is coming 0.3 So, this is 0.34. So, the P A value is equal to half into 0.34 into gamma is 19 into H is 6.2 square. So, this value is coming 124.2 kilo Newton per meter as we are calculating this thing per meter distance. So, this is per meter. Now, as uh, from this figure, we can see that P is acting as an angle of 15 degree. So, we can take the vertical components and horizontal components of this P A that we can write like this is P V and this is P H. So, this is the vertical component of P A P V and P H is the horizontal component of P A. So, we can calculate that P V is P A into sin 15 degree that is equal to 32.15 kilo Newton per meter. 
Similarly, P H is P A into cos 15 degree, which is equal to 120 kilo Newton per meter. So, the vertical force and horizontal force that is coming due to the lateral earth pressure of the backfill that we can we have calculated. Now, we have to calculate the other parts of this problem. So, now for the other parts, suppose if I take the previous figure, the our main figure, then in this total retaining wall, we can take uh, several parts of the retaining wall. So, we can take this is number 1, this number 1 means this rectangular is our first component. Then this triangle is number 2, that means this triangular zone is number 2. Then this total base slab is third zone and this total rectangular soil portion is fourth zone and this triangular soil portion is zone 5. Now, we have to take uh, we have to determine the individual weight of this 5 zones, their centroid where these weights are acting actually and then the moment with respect to toe. So, all these things we have to calculate because this these 5 zones this load are giving the vertical force and that will also give the resistive moment and this P A due to this P A will get the overturning moment. So, first we have to calculate the weight of different portion of the of this total system. Now, first if we calculate uh, this weight, we can take the for the weight calculation, we can take this table, we can make this table that is our serial number. Then weight calculation, that is kilo Newton per meter. Then the force that we will calculate, that is also kilo Newton per meter and this force can be vertical and this can be horizontal. So, this is for the weight calculation table that we will calculate the first serial number 1, the first segment weight that we will calculate. So, for this first segment, this is for the first segment, the weight will be this area into the unit weight of the concrete. So, this area will be 4.8 meter into 0.3 into 24. So, if in this way, if we calculate the weight of every section, then weight 1 for the first section is 0 0.3 into 4.8 into 24, that is the unit weight of the concrete. So, and this will act in the vertical direction. So, in vertical direction, you can write the total weight W 1 that is equal to 34.56 kilo Newton per meter. Similarly, if we calculate the weight of second portion that is a triangle, so that we can write half into 0 0.2 into 4.8 height and then 24. So, we will get this value is 11.52 and this will also act in a vertical direction. So, we will get this is also 11.52. Similarly, the third weight, if we calculate the weight of the third segment, so that is 0 0.6 into 4.1 into 24, because for the third segment means this total base slab. So, that is 4.1 into 0 0.6 into 24, 0 0.6 is this distance and 4.1 is total blaze slab width and then for 24 is the 
unit weight of the concrete. So, if I use this value, then it is come 59.04. Then for the fourth section, that is for the soil, fourth and fifth portion, that is the fourth and fifth portion, fourth this rectangular portion and fifth this triangular portion, this is for the weight of the soil. So, for the fourth portion, we can write this is 3 into 4.8 into 19 as the unit weight of this soil is 19 and for the triangular section it will be half into 0 0.8 into point into 3 into 19. So, in that, that way if I write fourth section that is 3 into 4.8 into 19. So, vertical force again this soil pressure will act in vertical direction the 273.8. Now, for the fifth segment for the triangular one for the soil that is equal to half into 0 0.8 into 3 into 19. So, that value is 22.8 kilo Newton per meter. So, these are the vertical loads, vertical force that is acting due to the concrete and the soil. Now, the we can write the uh, next two forces that is the horizontal and vertical forces acting due to the lateral earth pressure. So, sixth segment we can write this is P V that will also act in vertical direction. So, that P V value is 32.15. Then the seventh one is P H horizontal force. So, that means, P H will act in horizontal direction. So, that is 120 kilo Newton per meter. So, if, so, we can write the total vertical force summation of V that is equal to the summation of this vertical column is 433.67. Similarly, summation of this horizontal force total 102 kilo Newton per meter. So, so summation of total vertical force is 433.67 kilo Newton per meter and summation of horizontal force is 120 kilo Newton per meter. So, this is force stable. Now, we will calculate the moment table. So, once we calculate the moment table, so this table will calculate. So, this is the force table, the next one is the moment table. So, again this is also serial number, then we will <coughs> consider the vertical and horizontal force that is force. So, now we can write the next column is this is serial number, we can write the next column is our lever arm with respect to toe. The next one is the moment. Now, this moment can be over resistive moment M R and this can be overturning moment m o. This is kilo Newton per in meter per meter. So, first we will go for again this seven force that we have taken first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So, from the force table, we can write the value of these forces. So, for the force table first vertical force for the first segment is 34.56, 
then second one is 11.52, then third one is 59.04, then fourth one is 273.6, fifth one is 22.8, then the sixth one is 32.15 and seventh one is 120 which is horizontal. Now, for the each segment we have to calculate the lever arm. So, now if I consider the first segment, this is the first segment. So, it is a rectangle. So, this will act the center of this rectangle. So, lever arm from the toe will be 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 divided by 2. So, that as it will act the center of this rectangle. So, that is 0.6, 0.2, 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 divided by 2. So, now if I write in this form, so the lever m will be for this first segment is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 sorry 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 divided by 2. So, this will give us the value 0 0.95. Similarly, for the second one, second is a triangle. So, second segment is a triangle. So, here lever m will be 0 0.6 plus 2 third of 0 0.2. So, that will give you the lever m of the second triangle portion. So, for the second portion, the lever m is 0 0.6 plus 2 third of 0 0.2. So, that will give 0.73. Similarly, for the third section that is the base of this rectangle. So, that will give us the straight forward this will act the center of this rectangle. So, 4.1 divided by 2. So, lever m for this third portion is 4.1 divided by 2 that is equal to 2.05. Now, lever arm similarly for the fourth section that is the rectangle of this backfill soil. So, that is 0 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 3 divided by 2 that is equal to. So, that means here this is 0 0.6, 0 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus it will act the center of this 3. So, plus 3 by 2. So, now this lever arm is 2.6. Similarly, for the fifth section segment that is for the triangular zone. So, that lever arm is 0.6 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 then it is a triangle. So, triangle means plus two third of 3. So, it will give 3.1. So, these are the lever arm value 0 0.951, 0 0.73, 2.01, 2 0.6, then 3.1 then and for the sixth one that is acting vertically at a distance of 4.1 meter. So, that is 4.1 meter for the sixth one and as we have calculated that the horizontal one that is the vertical one will act 4.1 meter from the toe and the horizontal will act 2.07 meter from the toe. So, that distance is 2.07, 2.07. So, these are the all rounded values are the Lever. Now, this from this, this vertical forces corresponding to that moment will give the resistive moment and the moment corresponding to this horizontal force that will give the overturning moment. Now, if I calculate this moment, so this is simply 34.56 into 0.95. So, this will give over resistive moment is 32.83. So, this is actually 34.56 into 
0.95. So, that gives you 32.8. Similarly, for the second one is 11.52 into 0.73. So, that value is 8.41. Similarly, for the third one is 59.04 into 2.05. So, this will give 121. The fourth one is 273.6 into 2.6 that is given 711.36. The fifth one is 22.8 into 3.1. So, this will give 70.68. Sixth one is 32.15 into 4.1. So, this will give 131.8. And the seventh one is 120 into 2.07. So, that will give 248.4. So, these are the resistive moments and the overturning moments. Now, if I take the summation of all these moments, so that means summation of m r that is equal to summation of this column is 1 0. 76.1 and summation of overturning moment is 248.4. So, <coughs> we can write that M r is 1076.1 kilo newton per meter kilo newton meter per meter and M o is 248.4 kilo newton meter per meter. Now, we'll, now we have completed the force table, have done the moment table, then we will calculate the or we will check the factor of safety for different condition. The first factor of safety that we will check that is for the sliding. So, factor of safety for sliding and that is the expression is total vertical force into tan delta divided by all horizontal force. Now, here is total vertical force summation is 433.6867 and tan delta that you have taken is 23 degree. So, into 10 23 degree and summation of all vertical uh, horizontal force is 120. So, this value is equal to 1.53 which is greater than 1.5. So, that means, it is safe. So, now next check that we will do for the overturning moment factor safety for the overturning. And that is summation of resistive moment divided by summation of overturning moment. So, summation of all resistive moment is 1076.1 divided by 2 4 8.4. So, that will give us 4.33 which is greater than 1.5. So, that means, it is safe. The first two checked we have done and it is safe against the sliding and the overturning. Next, we will calculate the E value or the no tension condition. So, first we calculate the x bar that expression I have given that x bar is summation of m r minus summation of m o divided by summation of all vertical force. So, summation of m r is 1076.1, m o is 248.4 divided by vertical force is 433.67. So, it is coming 1.9 meter. So, E we can eccentricity we can calculate it is the B divided by 2 minus x bar. B is the total base width and here total base is 
1 divided by 2 minus 1.9. So, it is coming 0.15 meter. So, and definitely which is less than b by 6. So, this no tension condition will occur. So, this is fine. So, next check we will calculate for the bearing capacity calculation. We have done the three checks that is the sliding, overturning and the no tension condition. Now, for the bearing, for bearing calculate first P max and that expression is all vertical force divided by base width 1 plus 6 E divided by total base width. Now, all vertical force is 4 3 3.67 divided by base width is 4.1 into 1 plus 6 into E is 0.15 and divided by 4.1. So, this P max value is 129 kilo Newton per meter square. So, now factor of safety for the bearing is the allowable force that is 400 kilo Newton per meter square divided by this allowable bearing pressure is 400 kilo Newton per meter square divided by 129. So, that value is 3.1 which is greater than 3. So, safe. So, in this way we have checked the all the factor of safety that is for the sliding, overturning, then for the no tension condition and a factor of safety for the bearing. So, all the checks are satisfied. So, the dimension that we have chosen that is ok for all the condition here it has satisfied all the factor of safety. So, we can use this dimension for our purpose. Now, there are few things that you have to mention that suppose this problem is partially unsafe or slightly unsafe by this sliding. In that case, one thing we can do that if this problem is, is not satisfied, suppose this is our retaining wall structure. So, this is the retaining wall structure, ground surface, this is ground surface. Now, say this retaining wall is unsafe against the sliding, then one thing we can do that we can provide one key here, this in this form just to increase this, this another portion that we can extend, it is called key. The idea of this key, this will give the additional resistance against the sliding. So, and another thing is that the, when you calculate the passive resistance, that passive resistance part that depth will also increase because here we will get calculate the passive resistance say P P. So, that passive resistance depth that will also increase, but one thing for the factor safety. So, this will give increase the passive resistance for this design, which we have al although uh, we have not considered in our calculation previous calculation, but this passive resistance we can that can increase and this will give the additional resistance against the sliding. So, if it is marginally unsafe against sliding, we can provide keys. Now, when we can provide key, one thing for the size this situation that the properties for the soil for this portion say phi 2 is the base property soil, soil property and C 2 is the foundation soil property and say phi 1 is the backfill soil property, C 1 is the backfill soil cohesion, this is friction, this is the foundation soil. Now, instead of taking the full in the situation when key is used instead of taking full phi 2 and C 2 generally it is
reduce by half to two third of the value of for the extra safety as for the pool passive resistance because in this case as this key we are applying for a for this portion only so it is it is doubtful that whether the full passive resistance will be developed or not so that's just to the for additional factor safety this soil property cn5 is reduced by half to two third for the additional factor of safety so now this is the function of key now another thing is that if we solve this problem that we have solved this problem and where this the soil property is the same for both the cases and another one that when we are talking about this theory that we have used the rankine theory okay now we can solve this problem for coulomb's theory also now this is the uh, home assignment for you if you want to you can uh, try to solve this problem by coulomb's theory by applying the coulomb's theory and you can see the what is the difference we are getting by if you use the two different theory another one that we are neglecting this passive resistance now if we we can solve this problem by using this passive resistance that also you can try to solve this one with use a passive resistance we can see how much ex extra factor safety you will get when you consider this passive resistance but these two things by pa considering passive resistance and using a different theory we can try we, you can try the, to solve this problem same problem now <coughs> when you talking about the retaining wall the next uh, segment that that we are talking about the retaining wall it is most of the cases is this the backfill material which is used uh, mostly which is used for the granular soil to avoid the water pressure because it, when you design the retaining wall you always try to avoid the induce of water pressure so that this additional water pressure will not come into retaining wall so that to uh, avoid this water pressure there are few things we can do that we can provide some holes in the retaining wall so that water can pass through through that hole so that the water pressure can be neglected suppose if this is one retaining wall structure that suppose this is one retaining wall structure this is base this is the ground surface so we can provide a hole or a water body can pass through this portion this is called weave holes w w p weave holes so we can provide some filter material we can provide some filter material here in the weave hole so this suppose this is backfill material so this is filter material now this filter material this weave holes this diameter is around 0.1 meter spacing is around 1.5 meter to 3 meter in horizontal direction so now this use of this weave holes is to reduce the pore water pressure developed due to the water now this pore water pressure if we can reduce this so if, I, if all the water can pass through this weave holes then we can reduce the pore water pressure so that pore water so that the additional lateral earth pressure that we can reduce by this way now another one that that we can consider this different types of weave holes that this is suppose a retaining wall we can provide a perforated pipe here with filter material surrounding this so that water can collect here and it can pass through from the retaining structure so that is our 
perforated pipe and this is filter material. Now, if this is for the granular uh, soil or sandy soil, now for the clay soil when fine grain soil is used because we always try to use so this is for the uh, sandy soil or granular soil. Now, case 2 if for the clay soil or fine grain soil. We always use, we always try to avoid the use of this fine grain soil, but sometimes if it is not possible to avoid this fine grain soil, then what we can do? Suppose this is our retaining structure. This is existing ground. This is the ground surface. Then we can provide a filter material along the vertical surface or we can provide and then we can provide a path so that water can collect here and it can pass through. So, this is we fold So, this is our filter material or vertical filter. Now, this filter material can be inclined also. Suppose, this is the mid retaining wall. So, that material can be inclined and then we can provide the weave holes here. So, this vertical material can be this is inclined material 